Hello everyone, my name is Tucker, and welcome back to our Russian Fishing for Spin Fishing series. So in the last episode, we ended up grabbing that big old lake trout on our small reel. Today I wanted to try an experiment. So I've got both rods here set up the exact same way, but I flipped the sides they're on. So my big rod is now on number two, where the small rod was yesterday and getting all the fish, and the small rod is over here on rod one. So curious to see if the big rod now grabs all the big fish or if it's something to do with the size of the tackle or why we were getting so many more fish and so many big fish over on the smaller reel. And smaller rod, smaller line, everything smaller. So they both have the Aquila 4G on them. Um, I did not look at any sort of cafe orders today. I want to do just get out of here and see what we can get logged in at about the perfect time to get on the water today so uh, we did i did get out of the boat in time yesterday i did not have to buy a new boat ticket today i had two one day tickets so i used one of them to get in the boat today so today's goal let's see what we can do as far as grinding up more silver uh looks like the small rod again gets some gets the first larger fish. But today's goal is to just grind up silver. Um, we definitely need silver to progress here and get it so we're not having to fight these large fish on especially this reel. This reel is very undersized and especially as we've been using it we're now down almost 10% of its capacity. So that makes it even harder to pull these larger fish in. I didn't look to see if anyone got a bigger uh, lake trout overnight either. So as far as I know, we still may have the number one US weekly record for lake trout. Definitely not global. Global, we're in the 15 kilos can't remember if i check that on uh this series or over on the float side or off camera even whatever this is, is pretty decent although this reel is pretty wore out honestly so i'm gonna have to make a decision what we're going to do are we going to repair it or are we going to have to buy another temporary reel? Or what? Just because it's going to be hard soon to keep this up. Whatever fish we have on here now is pretty big again. Which is unfortunate to be on this rod, this reel. Would really like it to have been on the other one. I'm going to go ahead and try and get this fish in real quick because it looks like it's a smaller one. Tiny, tiny baby lake trout. But that one's in. And this one appears to have not slipped off the hook yet. Um, I'm trying to figure out where it's going. It's going to... Ah, it did slip off the hook. Dang it. That's one of the downsides of letting slack get in the line is you're more than likely to drop the fish off. It is what it is there. Not going to be too upset.
Another smaller lake trout over on the bigger rod. Like to get away from the shore. I tend to get pike over here. Don't really want to lose lures. Arctic char. There's small fish over here. All right, I'm curious. US weekly. Lakers. Yep, we're still on top. Rod one again. Small rod again gets another big fish. Man. Marker perch over here on bigger reel. Whatever this is, just did a heckin' good jump. Oh, now we got a big fish on both rods. Let's at least tighten the friction break up on that one a little bit. This one doesn't feel quite as big as that last one did. I don't know about the one over on the other rod, though. The other rod has a little bit more line, so I'm okay with giving up as much as I sound like I am. Now I'm a little concerned about the other rod. But if this one, nope, he's not gonna stay over there in the corner. Come on fish. Get around the boat. 1.6 kilo Laker. This one I think is still on. It. Yep, it is. Nice. I did not throw rod one back in the water. I didn't have time. I didn't want to lose this fish. Fun as fishing with undersized equipment can be can be a struggle as well too.
This one's a pretty strong fish because it's swimming against boat and able to pull drag a little bit. Pulling in the same direction I'm going. It also keeps doing that where it'll turn its head towards us for a few minutes, a few seconds, not minutes. I didn't mean to hit W. Didn't really impact anything. It just that's why the hands are busy message showed up. Hit S there instead of D. I haven't seen what this is yet. We made some good progress on it. Didn't mean to hit enter there with my mouse. Gonna have to see what those messages are here in a second. good just saw it there look like a laker it still has a lot of energy for it to eat up in the air as much as it did there at least it's on the bigger rod There was a patch overnight. I took a look at the patch notes and basically nothing important. Some sort of repainting on one of the rods. Some numbers at a different font than what was expected. And if you couldn't use an item, you couldn't send it to someone. So nothing that's going to impact us. At least that's in the notes. Who knows if something else was changed. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. Gone way down in the deep hole. I am glad I did not throw the other rod back in because I can't afford for it to be dragging a fish this whole time.
4.7 kilo lake trout. Not a bad fish. Food got a little lower than I should have let it there. Didn't think about it while I was fighting the fish. One of those I lost track of where we were because I was just chasing the fish. Decent grayling here. Eh, a little smaller than it looked. Now the buy rate sure has slowed down all of a sudden. Just starting to check to make sure I had the reels locked. There we go again. It does seem like the thinner line is causing more bigger fish to bite, which is unfortunate. Don't really want to be pulling it up out of the water like that the whole time. Did it there because we got slack and I do not want slack in the line.
another lake trout. I can see it. You bastard fish. Swam the wrong way. Got another fish over on bigger rod and reel too. Pull this one in real quick and get it back out. It was a small enough fish that I knew I could. Oh, F1, one. Come on, keyboard. Ah, I lost this fish. That's unfortunate. That's the second time that's happened. And for not a good fish either. Ooh, hello. We hooked something else big, though, before we even got this reeled in. Maybe even the same fish. Or maybe we had a small fish get on the other rod and pop off. No, because I was able to adjust the reel speed. Or retrieval speed, so we definitely lost whatever was on this one and picked something else big up. This poor reel. This poor reel. Come back here, fish. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay, we're good. Thought we were going to hit the uh, cliff face there. that one in while we've got some good tension on the other one You got a jumper. Means it is not worn out yet. Six kilo. Oh, not a big fish for how far to, or for our, how hard it fought. Marker perch here, and eh, not even a marker.
Ooh. And a little bit of drag over on the bigger rod. I'm hearing a lot more drag on the smaller rod. I saw the fish grab the smaller rod too. It was a good one. Two kilo lake trout. Big fish on both rods. And I kind of want the one over here. I'm going to risk the one on the already worn out rod to try and get this one. And that one, the other one already got off, unfortunately. Not entirely surprised with how slack the lines got. I've not seen this one. The other one looked like it was about a kilo. This one feels bigger. Part of why I let the other one go is I wanted to try and get this one in. So I think it's a bigger fish. Fishy fish. Stay on there. Right now it's actually getting a lot of bonus from the boat going the opposite direction. Poor fish would be so dizzy after this. This for real life. ding ding is someone sending me a message I usually look those off camera have it Three point five kilo Laker. Twenty fish, thirty minutes. Not horrible for how 
the fish we've caught and how small our equipment is not not a horrible day Definitely someone sending me a message, so I'll look at that off camera. Wanted to make sure it wasn't something obviously important. Small rod, big fish. It's poor reel. If I remember correctly, the friction break started at 7.4% wear today. I'm kind of curious where it's going to end up. I heard it jump. I didn't see it. I wasn't zoomed in enough in the reflection. should be able to see this fish not that deep here oh great the other rod it's got something good on it too now I can hear it clicking This has got a lake trout on it. I just barely saw it for a second. It is still fighting as hard as it can. This is risky. I don't know if I'm going to get turned in time. And I don't think I am. I lost the big one over on one while I was fixing that. That's unfortunate. Although I doubt it was anything major, honestly. No, there's still a fish on here. I don't know if it's the same one or not. Looks like it. Come up here, come on. There we go. One, two, three, four, Lake Trout.
tiny perch. Get away from the quay there. Good. Another tiny perch. Another big fish on rod one. <laughs> Poor, poor reel. Good grayling though. 2.2 kilo grayling. That's going to be worth a good amount. Another good grayling. Tiny perch. One doesn't feel that big. Yeah, shy of a kilo trout. Twenty nine fish in basically thirty nine minutes, not horrible. Small trout, big something. up so much of that friction break. I'm going to guess we're down to about 12% where and what the percentage wear on the friction break means is it's that much less powerful. So make it easy. If you've got a 5 kilo friction break and you're 10% warm your friction brake can only support four and a half kilos stopping power basically we've got i think it's a three eight kilo reel on here it was basically seven and a half percent if we're ten percent that means we've got a uh three and a half Kilo, if not a little bit lower than three and a half kilo reel right now. The same thing, same thing for your line, same thing for your rods. So it is something to keep an eye on. Don't like that this one's heading me right to the wall again. I'm turning the opposite direction from what I thought he would do. Got a small perch over on 
bigger rod, of course. Seen statements in the past from de from the devs that line color currently doesn't matter. So the fact that we have white line here and black line on the other shouldn't matter. Unless they've changed something, just haven't said anything. But that's possible, but I doubt it. noticing I'm able to turn the friction break up higher as well so that's giving me the more clues that I'm burning the friction break up more and more which I know I am but before we were 26 at a max 27 was pushing it now 27 is pretty safe Later on, there's kind of two me two weights you have to care about on your reels. These reels, they're both very similar. Later on, there's a mechanism weight. Nice, two kilo trout. Uh, there's a mechanism weight and a friction break weight. And that lets you pull in some of the bigger fishes. You, you can lock your friction break and still pull in fish with the mech reel weight. And the mech weight is a hidden value it doesn't show up when you look at the reels but these starter reels they're virtually identical but later on it can be a hundred percent different you can have a 15 kilo reel that has a mech weight of 30 or higher There are spreadsheets that help you figure that out. There's one in Russian, uh, an English one is put out by Kilted Jock. Just Google for that, you can easily find it. I think it's even pinned on the Russian Fishing for forums. And that's just a, it's a Google Docs spreadsheet. So I guess a Google Sheets view. It's got a lot of good information in it. Not just mech weights, but includes price differences, some nice Vendis. Ooh. Uh, spreadsheet also has some leveling techniques to level up ground bait and things like that. I think it even has some distance markings that you can use. It shows you if you're standing here, you need to cast 20 meters to get to that this hole or that hole. Another decent eyed. Thirty six fish, forty five minutes. Not a horrible day. I'm happy. I'm curious. Eleven point two percent on the friction break. 
Rod's doing okay. Line's getting a little worn. I saw that as well, but not horrible. Oops, sorry about spinning the mouse there. Trying to grab something that uh, was falling on the couch. Looks like Mother Nature is going to have some fun with us here in real life. It's supposed to be 70s the next couple days and then drop below freezing and possible snow on uh, Thursday evening. Going from 72 to 27 and then 30s Friday and Saturday for a high. Another decent Vindy. is hitting the drive keys someone rolled over upside down was blocking where I'd like to put my mouse moving my hand but after I left him at home for hours yesterday I understand he's a newer dog to me I've only had him since March into March and with me working from home all, all the time he doesn't get left home for three four hours too often so he's just happy to have me here today and it's a little bit warm roll upside down and get comfortable Or it gets cold. It's interesting that it, it's warm today, but very, very cloudy out there. I haven't seen the sun really all day. And I'm, uh, I like to, I don't mind being in the dark or things like that. So keep the curtains drawn, things like that. So it's pretty dark in the house too. Except for the three monitors I have on right now, because I got the work laptop, my external monitor, and monitor that I'm playing on here. Oops, wasn't paying attention. That one's my fault. I think I'm going to start heading towards the dock. It's getting late at night. Don't really want to use a second boat ticket today. I don't want to hook into something that's going to force us to. So I'm going to head towards the dock. If we hook into something great, if not, I think we're going to wrap it up here with 39 fish. I mean, not a bad, not a bad haul. I don't know if anything was a order, cafe order. I didn't even look at the cafe. I logged in. It was about 6 a.m. So I wanted to. Get as much of a fishing day at the end as I could. And I don't, as you saw in the last episode, I don't have to return the boat to where I got it from. I just like to. It kind of makes sense because that way you're going to run right by the cafe. You look at if there's anything you need to turn in. And then run over to the fish market.
take a quick look through the cafe, see if we got anything. Uh, we didn't get a four kilo grayling. Didn't go rough, no plods, no pike. Four 1.6 kilo lake trout. So we definitely got that. We've got enough time. Uh, didn't get a one kilo hide. We were close. We will make, we will get that one for 66.69 silver. I'm just curious overall what we had before selling to the cafe. So only 89 silver today. So a little bit, a little bit light on the silver from the fish market. I think it's going to be a good day overall. So sort by weight, get the smallest four. For 66.69. And another 70 left over. So that's 133 silver, 134 silver today. Not, not bad. Again, we got pretty undersized equipment to be fishing here. And we missed a, we lost a couple of good fish. While we were switching around uh, that 2.2 grayling was almost 30 silver by itself 4.7 lake trout were pretty decent at uh quarter of a kilo bendy was four silver so not a bad day i'll take it it's up to 868 silver still four five hundred to go before we'll be able to afford the new rod or the new reel that I'm wanting. So gonna be interesting how that works out. Um curious. I take this off. The 38 silver I can repair and actually upgrade that um friction brake that's worn out and keep it the same it would be 25 silver so i don't know i i don't think we're to the point that i have to do that yet but we're probably a day or two away from there so i'll think it through and we'll go from there but i appreciate everyone watching we'll be back again tomorrow tight lines and have a good one we'll talk to y'all later Bye bye